think I'd, I I don't assume you'd want me to take one of these guys over to SoCal for you, do you? Uh, my landlady would kill me, so no, I don't. Yeah, all right. Oh. All right, so I haven't thought at all in the past week. So well, I mean, maybe not thought. Uh, I helped you guys on Wednesday. Um. But okay, so the only person in here that's had this talk for me before is busy, so you know, it's usually not a big deal. All right, so um, I can. I, I'm kidding. <laughs> yeah, no, no, you can't. I'm sorry. What is this? <laughs> oh, cool. Poggers. Oh my god, it's just a, it's just a board now. It's just a board. Isn't that what you want? I know, but before I had lines, can I change it? Oh, this fucking something on my monitor. Uh, oh, I can make it okay. Sticky note, that's cool. What's this? Image menu. Add text. Lasso. Oh. Oh fuck! Now I've done it. Oh, okay, we're good. Are right, you guys going back on this one? All right. Is everyone here and ready? Yeah. I don't care. I'm gonna yep. do it anyway. All right. Um. So this is gonna be maybe not quick but it's not gonna be long either maybe like an hour i'd say um it depends on how much i want to talk but um since we don't have anything particular to go over today um from i wasn't here for monday scrim i don't know neither was a dog i would imagine i was here for wednesday scrim but i mean i'm still out of it so i don't feel like going over that maybe we will who knows um so what i want to go over today is phase of the fight communication you know that that sort of thing because I noticed that we don't do it at all, um, and I think it'll help clear some things up for everyone to know, all right, this is the phase of the fight that we're in, and what we should be doing or saying or, um, you know, like maybe positioning or, or whatever the fuck, depends on your role, of course. Um, also, I'm going to be talking a lot since I know Savage and Frothy, I don't think... Maybe not. Maybe not even Ira. Like you've you haven't seen me do this particular thing before. But I I talk, and if you have a question, you have to say Zaf, shut up. I got a question, and, or the, otherwise I'm not gonna. You're just never gonna be able to ask your question. So just so you know. Um, but anyway, now we're talking about the stage of the fight. Um, so there are three stages. Um, two. I, I promise it's the stages. I have shit handwriting. Get over it. Um, so there are three stages of the fight in Overwatch. Um. To me, anyway. So this is, again, an opinion. But this will help break it down, like I said. Um, there is the before fight. Um, there's a during fight. And then there's the, you know, post, after, or whatever. I guess we could just do that. How about I just do that? There's pre, during, and post. All right. So. That's it. No, I'm kidding. Of course not. Um. Oh, I fucking hate erasing. So if we if we talk about just the pre-fight, right? So things that we should keep in mind during the pre-fight phase. Um, so this is like let's say we're walking out of spawn first fight. Obviously, you should be talking about this a little bit in spawn, depending. Um, you know, maybe you should have like a Hanzo or something. You know, shoot a Sonic Arrow like on Route 66 on defense or sorry on attack. It's a good idea to have a Hanzo shoot the arrow at the truck or the train or whatever to see if they're holding close right and then that's an immediate oh this is before the fight we can we have a little bit of time to do something so either you're doing this in spawn right before maybe 15 seconds before the you know it's actually time to go um or on your way to the point or you know cough or whatever there are certain things that we should be talking about now this isn't included this is like pre-fight after already like a fight so like second fight um but we're, we would be talking about, like, ults. So we, we would be tracking them. Um, so this would be the, uh, well, obviously the ult tracker. Uh, I'll just put that as UT. And then the IGL, right? Something that, you know, we went over with ADOG the other day, or last week, um, is giving command. Yeah, not command necessarily, but a directive about what we want to do, what we want to, what our fight plan is, right? So that would be, like I said, a fight plan. Which would include, I mean, to be ults, you know, how we want to play the neutral fight. Um, and neutral fight is basically the fight before we actually use ults, right? Um, 
it's it can be like the poke phase if you're playing like double shield uh it could be staging if you're playing dive it could be just until someone has an ult if you're playing like a hard brawl like if we if we've watched owl the entire neutral fight is until someone pops an ult and then it's the ult fight and then it becomes no longer neutral you know, this, I mean, this could be, like, shield break or fuck, I don't know, whatever the fuck you want to do. Um, you know, if you want to, like, you should break a shield for shatter or something. That usually what is a fight plan typically just consists of. Uh, it can also include, like, location stuff. Like, where we want to take our fight. Where do we want to go? What, what's what's the game plan, right? So, we, we have the, what we want to do, what we want to use. Now, you need to add a location to that. Um, or... I mean, it, I mean, it could be not, not just a location. Like, it could be um, an area of the map, I guess, a region um, where you want to stage. I mean, I guess that's still a location, but whatever. Um, and then that's that's pretty much it. If, if if we're going very, very, very basic, that's that's the entire IGL every pre-fight, right? And that's pretty much it for the IGL role. Um, and then for everyone else. So we just put in up everyone. Well, this isn't everyone though. This is uh, everyone. We would be doing stuff like uh, callouts, right? Uh, so this is where, pretty much where, where and what. I guess it would be better if I put in who, not not what. Um, oh, there's a Hanzo top left or the Ryan. Where where is this person? You know, looking for a sneaky shadow or whatever. Um, Everyone, but not really DPS, unless it is in front of you and it's important. Um, also, DPS. So, like, I know Busy and Ira, uh, well, Busy primarily likes to play a lot of Widow. So, we should be calling out. This This goes also during the during fight, but it's also important for the pre-fight when we're walking to um, somewhere, is calling out locations for, like, Widow. Um, so, Busy might have to specifically, hey, where is Widow? Because the last thing you want, you know, when you're playing Widow is to walk around a corner n and not have anyone say where the, where the Widow is. Like, let's say you're, you're fighting on King's Row first or something, and the Widow is just in the window, and Busy's like, yo, where's where's the Widow? You can Everyone can see her, but no one says anything. Busy turns around a corner, gets headshot because no one said where the Widow was. And it's, it's now a 5v6 again, or whatever it was before, right? So that's obviously an important call out. Obviously, this is also every sniper in the game. So also Ash and uh, Hanzo. That's also important. Uh, less so for Ash and Hanzo because Ash is usually just with the team, and then Hanzo is either with the team or doing his own thing somewhere else. Right. So we would also be worrying about call outs. I'm trying to think of other things that would usually transpire in the pre-fight that would be important. Um, I think that's pretty much it for comms. Um, so this so if we have this this would be I should just write his name not fucking so this would be Foster and then this would be Frothy. Um, now what we should do after every fight is someone say or just Frothy just gets in the habit of doing this. Um, all right, what else do they what else do they have? And then you say the old. That, that was exactly what I was gonna start doing. I just remembered my old team used to do that a lot. What asking? Yeah. Yeah, no, we, yeah. I mean, that's, uh, when I was old tracking on, on both, both Alpha Sky and Disbanded, um, whoever was IGN would say, hey, Zaf, what, what else they got? And I would, I wouldn't say anything. I'd be like, yep, I'm, I'm thinking. And it, a couple seconds, all right, this is what they got. You know, I don't, I don't like, um, going down the list. Yep, 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 yep. I do it in my head. And then I'm like, this is what they have. I just make it one sentence instead of, you know, making it really long or whatever. I mean, of course, that's depending on the old tracker, what they want to do. Um, now, Frothy could be asking this to Frothy, or Frothy just says, okay, this is what they have. Now, this is also usually where it's important for the, the person who's also ult tracking to be IGLing, uh, and traditionally, it, it is the main support player. Now, I know that's not how we have it particularly organized, and that's, that's okay. Um, that's how, I mean, I've never had a team, had a main support player that did both, um, well, I guess. Um, so, yeah, you, you can foster just to ask you, hey, what else they have or whatever. And that's pretty much the entire pre-fight phase, unless I'm forgetting something. But I don't think I'm forgetting anything very important. Um, 
So, how do I make a new whiteboard? I don't, I don't, it's been a while since I've used this. What is this? Can I just, oh, how about I just do this? Problem solved. All right, now we, now we have uh, the during fight. This is arguably the most important one. Um, duh. All right, now, this is where primarily we don't have a target caller, but that'll probably change in the in the next few weeks. But this is where the target caller, uh, yet to be determined, is doing the majority of the calls. Uh, obviously, this is targets like I would say eighty percent of the time. Um, it's usually the off tank player, usually because the off tank player traditionally has been always played Diva, uh, and Diva is a I get a I get a, a jail free card on like a four second cooldown. Um, also, like they, they're also paying attention to their supports. They're paying attention to the front line. They have their eyes everywhere traditionally, and that's why it's always. Well, I shouldn't say always. That's why it's usually been a tank player specifically. Um, like if it's uh, like Ryan Zarya for example, it's usually the Zarya, and then Ryan's just like backing shit up, or he's calling rotations, or calling tempo, or, or you know that sort of thing. Now, it could, it could be Foster. I don't care who it is, to be honest with you. But, I mean, it could be busy for all I give a shit. I don't really want it to be busy. It shouldn't be a DPS player. It should be, it should be a tank for going for traditional roles. Um, because DPS players need to be worrying about aiming and not talking. Um, yeah, so that's... This, this is, like, number one priority uh, in a fight is target calling. Because if you don't have good target calling, I mean... You're, you're relying on just outscoring the enemy team and everyone being on the same page but not saying a goddamn word. And that is very hard to do. We all know that in ranked, that that is basically impossible. And it, sometimes it just feels like either I'm carrying or we're going to lose. And that's just usually how it goes uh, in ranked anyway. In all ELO, by the way. It's not just fucking plat and silver and whatever. Um, and then I'm also going to include like the IGL role um, slash main tank. But this is the same person. We'll do that afterwards. Um, everyone, eh, not everyone. It is important that we echo, um, the target caller. Or, uh, like, Busy's playing Tracer or something. Busy doesn't have to be following up on it. Now, it is useful, um, to say, like, hey, this person's won, and Busy should hear that, and be able to respond to that. Or Ira, or Savage, or whoever the fuck, uh, should be able to respond to, hey, this person's won, and you can kind of change focus on something. Now, sometimes, that's still the wrong play. There's usually one person on the team. Like, if we, if we just do very, very traditional OG dive with, like, a Genji Tracer, uh, a Winston Diva, and, like, an Ana Lucio, super fucking 2018, right? Oh, 2016. Um, if that's what we were playing, uh, the Tracer player is either following up on kills or doing her own thing, usually taking a Tracer 1v1 so that their support player is alive and well. And then the Genji is farming Blade, finishing off kills with the Winston, and Tracer's going in and out of the, the team fight, so to speak, going from flanker to finisher. Tracer's really good at doing both of those things. Uh, and then the Ana player is just existing, praying to God that she doesn't die. And the Lucio is kind of in between the uh, like the midline and the backline to try and help the the, uh, the Ana and Diva's also in that scenario as well, trying to help the main tank player and then also the flex support player, traditionally. Uh, and then that's where it's also important that even the support player, depending on the support that you're playing, like if you're playing BAP or Zen, oh, I, yeah, and you also need to go that this changes depending on uh, the role of the flex support, by the way, and I'll get to that in a second, just reminding myself. But we should be echoing what the target caller is calling, um, unless specifically, like I'm trying to say, um, Busy says, hey, this person's 1 HP, or absolute 1, just sneeze on them or something. Uh, then we shouldn't get our pandas in a bunch about, okay, well, yeah, let's just shift our focus this real quick and then go back to the main fight, right? Now, there are scenarios where you can't do that. Like, let's say the Rhine is like 80% to shatter and Foster is overriding something. If Foster isn't the the target caller, let's just say it's Savage, there are, there are certain people who have uh, priority or what's, what's that word? I have seniority over other people, uh, overriding, that's what it is. They, they, he can override comms, so to speak, sometimes. Hey, this person's on my, this person has shatter, we need to kill them. Or, hey, this, this, you know, it's the last fight, we have to kill Zarya. You know, then that person can override certain things because they, either it's the 
old tracker or whoever the fuck um calling these things because it's a priority target and the target caller may not be worrying about that at that certain time and then obviously that needs to change now for playing zen uh it is 100 percent the time the zen player uh i hope that it would be owen but it might also be frothy depending on what we're playing where the zen player is target calling 100 percent of the time because we have Discord. And if you aren't on the Discord of Target, unless, like I said on the show Tracer or something, then you're throwing, pretty much. Like, that's just how it goes. The Discord target should be... You should only, in the kill feed... The only person who shouldn't be getting assists on a kill is Tracer. And shouldn't, as in, it's okay for her not to. Everyone else should be... Whenever they get a kill, finishing the target, it should be fucking three assists or whatever. With Zen being the first one, of course, with Discord. Um... So yeah, that's obviously a priority in the in the in the uh, during the fight, and then well we can talk about the IGO now. So this is mainly Foster's role um, is tempo uh, rotations. Uh, so I think other things um, if he's playing Ryan like shield management, uh, where and when and th- like there's a whole bunch of other shit that he needs to be worrying about. And what he should be calling. Basically, he's saying exactly what he's doing 100% of the time. Because, hey, I need to drop my shield. If he doesn't say that, and a Hanzo just shoots him at the wrong time, he can one-shot a Baptiste behind a shield. You know? Like, that's why it's very important that the the Reinhardt player specifically calls pretty much everything that he's doing. Because if he doesn't, we're going to get scenarios where, like, dude, I thought your shield was up. No, I need to recharge. Fuck. You know, we lost the fight because our Bap died immediately. Um... And that has happened before. Like, I've seen it. So, Foster should be calling pretty much all of this um, at all times. Now, Tempo is um, also included with uh, the Lucio player, if we're playing Lucio, to, yo, do we have speed boost? Yep. And then, you know, you should go back and forth with comms about that. Uh, rotations would be, yo, let's rotate, you know, if we're thinking about, like, Command Center and Lijing Tower, rotating from Choke into White, uh, the room on the right side, depending on what side of the map you're on. Or, like, where you want to go as the enemy team is approaching. Like, where you want to take a fight, for example. This can kind of be pre-fight. It's also mid-fight. I mean, it kind of depends. Um, you know, and yeah. Uh, yeah. Obviously, you know, shoot management is included in tempo. Um, like, where you, where you like, want to go is included in rotations. And that's pretty much the, the majority of the... At least the comm-specific things in the during the fight. Um... Trying to think of other things that are important. Um, oh yeah, well, okay. We got. I got more stuff. Um, so uh, there are certain uh, people on the team that can go OTF on the flank. Um, now, obviously, that's like a tracer player. Sometimes it's a Zen player. Fuck it, why not? Um, it just depends. It can be sorry. I don't really care who it is. But if you're going to go on the flank, just say it. <laughs> Right, it's okay to do those kind of things, but at least you, hey, I, hey, I'm gonna go on the flank. Cool, got it. Now, whether or not they hear you or listen to you is completely that I don't care. Um, I mean, I do care, but that's that's their problem, not yours, because you're at least you're trying to communicate these kind of things. So, like during the fight, um, like McCree or um, Tracer or fucking May, I don't give a shit, whoever. Um, just call that your OTF. Um, it's a lot easier than saying on the flank, even though it's the same amount of syllables. Um, you know, you don't really necessarily have to go say where you're going OTF. Um, you can also include a location, right? Um, this could also include, hey, I'm going to spawn camp someone real quick, like on Tracer, for example. This isn't something you necessarily have to call, because um, depending on the hero that you're playing, it's just assumed about what OTF means. Yeah, but it is, like I said, important. Um, also, for this is now... DPS comms, I should say. Um, like, saying, hey, are you, I'm with you. We can push up. All right, that's good to know. Um, also, support players. Um, I should include that. Um, just letting Foster or someone else, hey, look, no, I'm with you. Like, a support player could be calming to, um, I don't know, like our McCree player. Yo, I, I got drone. Let's move up. Or, I, I don't give a shit. Let's, w- let's window. Right? Um, just letting the other player on your team... Hey, no, I'm right next to you. We can fight right here. All right, cool. Got it. You know? I do this a lot when I play Ana. Because 
I have noticed that if I don't specifically, hey, no, I got you. They are going to play a lot more passive. They're going to be acting like a support player is not looking at them. We all do this. It's not necessarily their fault. Um, but I have learned to start saying those kind of things. So that also to my tank players, of course. And, you know, I got you, Winston. So that he knows that someone it, that he is being healed and there's attention being brought to him so that he can maintain space effectively and do his job enabling the DPS players to do something, right? Or I got Nano or everything else, right? That a, a support player would be calling um, drone shift. I don't fucking care. Um, nade, just calling that for other people, letting them know, hey, I got you. It's all it's just important. Just start doing it, Owen and Brothy, uh, um, because it's important. Also, DPS players to um, support, or I don't know, like tank players. I got bubble for you. Um, all of those are very important comms. Um, I'm not gonna stress them a lot, um, but. I promise you that if you start doing those things and make a conscious effort to try and improve on how you communicate, you're going to do a lot better in scrims. And when you start doing better in scrims, you're going to start seeing you you can improve mechanically a lot better too because now you're you're worrying about one less thing, right? It's very hard to improve something, let's say in Overwatch specifically, because there's three main things about Overwatch that are I would say like the three pillars, so to speak. Uh, it's obviously mechanics, duh. Um, it's like game sense, awareness. And then the other one is building management. Those three things are basically what Overwatch is in a nutshell. Um, and then micro and macro play is sprinkled in on top of those three things. Oh, I need to drink water. Holy fuck, I'm out of breath. I haven't talked this while. I don't know. I haven't talked this long in a while. I forget to breathe. Anyway. Um, yeah. Those three things. So, if you don't have to worry so much about how you communicate... Maybe that's uh, game sense and awareness. Then you can worry more about your mechanics. And you can, that's just something that's, you know, you don't have to think about anymore. You're just like, yep, I just do this. You know, like uh, I know some of us don't really talk a lot, um, except when we're like low or, you know, they get really loud when someone's one HP. But if you just talk more often, you start having to think about it less and it starts taking. You can start doing more mechanical things, even if you're still talking, right? Because it just becomes second nature. Um, you know, it's kind of like muscle memory or whatever fucking shit that you want to think about and how to relate to those things. It's the same thing with your voice. It's the same thing with how you play Overwatch. Um, and, of course, if you don't talk a lot, it's going to be tiring for the first two hours. It's going to be tiring for the first month of actually talk, trying to talk a lot more. Uh, but once you get it down, it's a lot easier to start doing, you know daily or in scrims or in, in ranked or i don't give a shit fucking pugs i don't care um thinking other things that are important in the mid fight um i think i think that might be it i'm sure th i'm sure there's something else um because there's a lot of micro play in the mid fight not specifically about comms um but, like, ma macro play is primarily in the pre-fight. But, like, what we want to do, when we want to do it. And then micro play starts... That's when the fight actually starts to break down. And then, um, depending on the comp that you're playing, of course. Um, it becomes very micro-based. Uh, like, if you're playing, like, a hard brawl. Or, like, goats, for example. It's pretty much all macro play. There's nothing about goats that is go uh, micro. Um, it is all big concept, ability management, and that's it. Right? At, at a very high level, it's ability management. When you, when you start, you know, like a 4K team versus a 3.5K team in GOATS. Well, yeah, I, building management doesn't matter. They just fucking just get out mechanic someone, right? But when mechanically you're about the same, it's all about ability management and game sense and awareness and, you know, so, yeah. But when you start playing dive, um, it's it's a quick transition from macro to micro. All right, yeah, I'm going to stage here. Yeah, I'm going to go in this person, right? Doing something large, trying to set a dive in a particular location. All right, yep. Fight started. I'm gonna go on this person at this location, three, two, one, or whatever. Um, and then brawl uh, is primarily a lot of micro play. Um, it's just trying to enable your DPS to stay alive for as long as possible, so that they do the majority of the kills. Um, or depending on the tank, you know, do that you have, maybe enabling the Rhine or the Zarya or the Sigma or whoever. Um, and then also worrying about Baptiste and getting his uh, his window down. So. Um, now let's worry about, oh, I need to move over here, uh, pre post fight. This is probably my favorite one of the three. Um, 
because this is the one that, in my opinion, separates teams. Obviously, mechanics in the in the in the during the fight, yeah, you can just hard diff a team, or just a hard team diff based purely off of mechanics. But post fight, that's when you start seeing teams that understand the broader sense of Overwatch, right? Now, probably asking, okay, Zaf, what what's 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 in the post fight that's so fucking important to you? Um, well, staggers is very important. Um, oh, I guess this is the cleanup phase. I mean, that's just what it is. Um. How far you want to take your aggression? Um, those are not Qs, I promise. This is supposed to be Gs. Um, it's probably these two are my my favorite things. Um, just how far you want to be aggressive. Like on King's War, for example. When we cap first, the majority of us know. All right, time to go to their spawn. That's what we do. Now, on other maps, we don't think that at all. Like, for example, um, like Havana. Havana is one of those maps where... I have almost never seen a team, when they cap first, be really aggressive and trying to go to their spawn door on second. Because it's really hard to go to spawn on second point. And then on third point, um, like when you cap second, it's usually you just fight near either the uh, the castle mega on the left uh, of uh, defender or of uh, attacker spawn, or you, you take the fight at that bridge. And that's pretty much as far as you go, right? But on King's Row, you can go from first all the way to third point d uh, spawn in like, I don't know, 10 seconds. Uh, who cares, right? Um, you can do this on like Icon Vault a little bit. Um, you can do this on uh, Rialto a little bit. Not too much on Rialto. Um, and you don't really ever do this on cough maps. You can. You should. Um, but it's less common on cough maps. Because usually people die on point. Because it's a lot easier to do that. And then obviously the spawn doesn't change. Which is another big factor in uh, the cleanup phase. Um, and then this is also... Um, um, that's supposed to be an E. That goes again with tempo with aggression. and uh, Cleanup phase. Uh, fuck, there's, there's something so important that I'm forgetting, but whatever, we'll talk about cleanup. Um, this is where, I need to put that in, we talk about, like I said, staggers, how far we want to go, um, it doesn't have to be Foster, it could be anyone, I don't give a shit, it could fucking could be Ira or Busy, I don't care, um, it could be Frothy, like I said, I don't really care, um, just... Go, make a plan. Hey, let's let's just get let's just fucking hit tab when you cap. All right, these people got short spawn. Let's go, right? Um, which is, I bet all of you knew that. Um, you should do that anyway. Just hit tab when you cap the point. Uh, anyone who is still respawning, obviously they're on third point. Anyone who already respawned, they're on second point. Fucking Lucio can just go immediately speed you guys. A uh, diva or a DPS player can just be on point um, until. Or bad piece. I don't really care. Um, I mean, I do care. Depending on how many staggers are still alive. If if they get a clean fight or a clean wipe on first and all six of them are alive, then, yeah, Lucio stays on point. They're, you're not going to go anywhere. You're not going to be able to 5v6 um, an entire team like that. Unless they're just regrouping in their old spawn or their new spawn for some reason. I don't know. Um, yeah. Duh. Um, but if there's, like, a couple people, Lucio can just speed boost all of y'all over there, have one person stay on point, don't really care who, obviously not the main tank player, and obviously not Lucio in that scenario. Um, you'll get the kills, Lucio speed back, swap, you know, um, and Lucio stays on point, and everyone else can just fight somewhere. Like, you can, uh, I might talk about this next week, about, um, very quick tank play, or I might, I might just do this with Foster and, I guess, uh, you Savage now, um. It's how you play double shield effectively and playing corners and all that. I mean, I might also be able to do this right afterwards. I don't know. Um, but going from one choke to another, um, kiting them, making them use cooldowns to get to you, that sort of thing, um, is how you keep the post-fight phase into the pre-fight phase. Very seamless. Um, and that's pretty much all of the post-fight. It's just cleanups and how far you want to go, um, what you want to do, that sort of thing. Now, immediately in the post fight, right? Once this is done, we have we have a all right check mark. Everyone, either the IGL or all right next fight. I don't care who says it. Um, I don't really give a shit. Um, 
we immediately roll into the pre-fight. Old track. Got it. All right, what are we doing? Got it. All right, where are they? Callouts. Got it. And then now we can worry about the pre-fight again. Right, setting up, staging, working the neutral fight to the, be the beginning of the fight starts, right? It's just immediately going into the next topic. Um, yeah, actually, I do. Have, I think I have time to go over the call-out thing um, or the micro-play. I can do that on King's Row. Um, yeah. I'm thinking, is that... I think that might be it. I've made this talk longer in the past, and I don't know why. I'm trying to think. Busy, do you remember? We went over this, I think. Do you? Am I missing something? I feel like I'm missing something. Was it during MIBC? Yeah, probably. Oh, man. Uh, that was like years ago. Not really, oof. but... I, I don't really remember all of that talk, to be honest. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah, I don't... I wouldn't, I wouldn't expect you to remember it all. Or any of it, to be honest. That was a long-ass time ago. Um, i trying to think. Maybe role-specific things for the post-fight. Um, oh, I for, yeah. What else did they use? Right. Um, and then also during the fight. I, I forgot that. I can go over here. During fight. Look at that. So cool. Um, is to include... Hey, what else are they, what else are they using? Yo, they just pop beat. Yeah, no shit. Still say it. Um, yo, watch out. Walls are up. Um, yo, they shattered. I don't care if six people get shattered. I have watched the old tracker get grabbed. Not not in this room, but I have watched an old tracker get grabbed and didn't know that they grabbed. So, just do yourself a favor for the next fight. Yep, I'm. Yep, they grabbed. Or, fuck, you can laugh. Yeah, they solo grabbed me. Haha, -ha, very funny, you know? Um, like, you can still be funny and humorous. I'm not trying to say this. Is, this is strictly how I want things to be, of course. Um, this is just, like, on match day, this is the most important thing that we do. Um, because those are the matches, that, those, those are the games that matter, of course. Um, now, obviously, I want us to be practicing this in scrims. All right, duh. Um, but I'm not going to be very harsh or strict on this because again scrims are none of us get paid to do this um so i'm not going to be very strict on how y'all calm specifically i mean i am going to be kind of strict but like i'm not gonna bench you because you're not doing these things right you should you know um like i know ira you're like a, you're a funny haha -ha person you can still be haha -ha funny you know um i don't really care right obviously it's important to still be you in the in the uh in the in the in scrims and stuff this is more just an outline i guess about how um high tier overwatch is called um again this depends on the team this is kind of in a perfect scenario how things would go every fight um and it can be very taxing for everyone to not have any fun during a scrim calm wise because there is never time to be funny or to do whatever so um yeah i guess i think the, the next topic about comms um, would be, um, like what to do, like when we played on King's Road the other day on Wednesday and I, and I unmuted my microphone and said, guys, shut the fuck up and worry about next fight. There needs to be a person on a team. I don't care who and this is just not on our team. This is on every single fucking team that there are two different roles, um, that are very important that don't get any mention Unless you already know about them, or you've had someone in the past do it, but you maybe not had the word for it. Um, it's usually the hype man, or I, hype person. Yeah, right. I'm fucking neutral around here. Uh, and then there's also, like, the captain, so to speak. Um, I'm going to put this in, in quotes, because it's... Oh, there's... Oh, I can do the eraser. Oh, what the fuck is this? Oh. Oh, look at that. I have buns on it, and I didn't know that did that. That's cool. Anyway, um... Yeah, so the hype person is usually the person who is the funny person. Um, this person, I don't want to say it's PMA all the time, but they're PMA, right? They're usually the person to recenter people, um, or like recenter a team fight, focus in. Um, what the fuck? Cool. Um, you know, yeah. I was this person on Alpha Sky. I wasn't this person on Disbanded. Um, but, like, I was the one, all right, guys, next fight, let's, whatever, you know. 
I was good at recentering people, good at, you know, honing people in to try and keep them mental up. Um, you know, and obviously never blame anyone else on the team. You should never do that. Uh, you can blame them in VOD review. Don't. But, I mean, you can. You can at least DM me or a dog about something, and we'll take a look at it and see if you're wrong or not. So, there you go. Um, but, yeah, this is person is usually... Like, if you, if you think about someone... Like, this would be Dogman, for example. He ne isn't necessarily PMA, but he is that person that keeps the energy up in a team, right? He is funny, depending on your sense of humor. Um, and he's good at being the energy person, right? Maintaining energy, the vibe, I guess, the fucking young people would say. Um, right. Uh, and then the captain role is kind of the... Uh, the person with maybe not necessarily the, the most experienced, but the person who's the most respected person. Um, you know, like, if you're thinking about a captain on the ship, right, he's obviously, like, the captain, right? He isn't necessarily the person who's overriding every comm, or it's not necessarily the IGL. But it's the person who you can ask a question or whatever and get, like, like a, a response that you might respect, right? Um I don't necessarily know if we're going to have this specific role on the team, so no one worry about being the captain, so to speak. Um, and it, this is kind of like, this is a very optional role. Um, it just depends on the team atmosphere. This this is not optional. Um, this is 100% required on any team ever. Um, because it just is. Because, I mean, you don't want six toxic fucking idiots on the same team. Because it's going to be awful. You know, I'm sure we've all been in that fucking ranked game where four, half, more than half of your team is just fucking toxic saying, you know, slurs to each other. And you're just like, Anna's one, you know, like, that's not fun. Um, so it's very important to have one person be this, not necessarily, like I said, PMA all the time, but the person who maintains energy in, in the atmosphere um, to try and keep mental up, right? Um, like on King's Row specifically, on Wednesday, right? Um, like, blaming Busy is not going to fix anything, right? Blaming Ivor isn't going to fix anything. Blaming anyone isn't going to fix anything. Um, like, this is kind of where the captain actually might be helpful, is addressing issues in the team. Um, in, in game, which is different than what I do out of game, um, is being able to see, hey, we have a problem with, let's say, a Widow. Yo, we're busy playing Widow. Hey, man. You're playing Widow. What can I do to help? Right? Because you're not going to say, hey, busy. Fucking kill the Widow. No. You're going to be, hey, busy. Let me help you kill the Widow. What, what do you need? Right? This doesn't also necessarily have to be the captain. This could be any player on the team. Asking, hey, let me help you. Like I was saying on Wednesday. I would much rather you be passive aggressive. Hey, man, let me help you. Than just flat out saying, just fucking kill her, dude. Just be better, forehead. Like, I know I would much rather you just be passive aggressive the entire time instead of being outright, you know, accusatory towards someone. I mean, I would rather you do do neither of those things. But if you're going to do one of those things, be a passive aggressive. Um, because at least the person is, at least you're going to get help, you know. Um, yeah. And obviously, the captain can also just redirect people to do these things. Like, hey, I need. Let's say it's Foster, for example. Hey, Savage, I need you to DM our widow so we can get ahead, or whatever, you know? Um, like, you can just, like, maybe not override someone's play style, but you can address an issue without saying what the issue is and who is being the issue on the enemy team or your team and being able to help those people. You're enabling someone, um, you know? Um, yeah. Anyone have any questions about this specifically? Because I wasn't planning on talking about this, but, I mean, it's cool, I guess. Cool. No. Got it. Um, I guess we can also go over something that I'm interested in, you know, a little, little hypothetical stuff here. Maybe not hypothetical, but, um, stuff that I, again, wasn't planning on talking about. Fuck it. I mean, what time is it? Yeah, it's 542. We got plenty of time. Um, knowing what your role is on the team. Oh, jobs and responsibilities. That's another thing I wanted to talk about. Um, so roles. I don't mean flex support, main support. I don't mean that. When I mean role-wise, it's kind of like in the NBA, Right? And A-Dog's going to give me a you'll pat on the back because he fucking loves his basketball analogies, right? There are different kind of players, both in the Overwatch League and how we play, right? You have your star players, right? Like, let's look at, for example, um, the Shock, right? 
their star player is Violet. None of us can argue that or Ons from last season, right? He, he was... Wow, that player is just better, right? You can enable the star player to do amazing things, and they are going to look like the best fucking player in the server 100% of the time, right? Ons is a perfect example of that, right? Um... Or striker when he's playing tracer or other things, right? Obviously, the shock. Every single one of those players is a star in their own right. Um, except I think, like Moth and FD God when they were playing. Well, when Moth was playing, he, they're not. They are a star, but they're a star for a different reason. Uh, this is usually like a, a DPS player or like the main tank, but it can also be the off tank player depending on how good the off tank player is. Um, but it's primarily these two roles. Well, I guess three um, that are star players, and then you also have like supporting. Um, like, that would be, like, um, what was his name? Like, you had, um, Michael Jordan and fucking Rod, what's his name? Rod, um, Tillman? No, that's not, that's not who it is. What's his name? The dude with a bunch of tattoos and piercings and shit. He went to North Korea. What was his name? None of you watch fucking basketball. What am I talking about? Um, but anyway, like, with Michael Jordan, for example, like he was the best player on that team, but no one talks about the people who were supporting him and enabling him, like giving him assists, right? Or making sure that he, you know, the person who's fucking making uh, blocks for him. No one is talking about those people, right? Or like if you talk about football, for example, with Tom Brady. Yeah, he's a star. Yeah, he's he's a fucking megastar. But what about his offense, uh, his offensive line? Like, they are literally the reason why he is doing so well. If he didn't have an... Obviously, if he didn't have an offensive line, he'd be getting fucking rolled over. He'd be looking like the worst pl worst person on the fucking team, right? This is what I was good at. Um, I wasn't a star player. I didn't make flashy plays. I didn't do any of that. But I was really good at supporting people, right? I knew what I was good at. And it was enabling my teammates, right? So this is just enabling. This is absolutely, almost never, a support... Or a, a DPS player. Like, it's, it just isn't. Because that's just, like, the opposite of what it is, right? A supporting player could be the off-tank player, right? Um, it's typically a support player, depending on the role that, you, uh, the, the hero that you're playing. So, like, this would be Brig, um, Lucio, like, Anna, um, like, those three, I think. Uh, I think so, yeah. And obviously, Star... That would include, like, Zen, um, and Bap, and then, like, Zarya, and all the DPS, um, right? And it, sometimes, like I said, it's for the supporting role, it's sometimes the off-tank player, um, it could be, like, when you play Orisa, for example, all you do is support. <laughs> You're just a fucking shield bot, and you, you... You hit right click every eight seconds or whatever her fucking cooldown is, and then you hit bongo. You know you hit your Q button, like that's all you do on Arisa, right? You're just enabling someone to do really good work, like your pull dragons or your pull flexing or your your pull. That's what you do, right? You're just helping someone else look better than the enemy team, right? Usually a role that doesn't get talked about a lot. It's not it's not usually a role that we like to think about. Normally we'd be like, yeah, I just want everyone to be the best player ever, right? I want the flashiest players on my Overwatch League, you know, team, right? Well, you wouldn't pick up Moth then. He's not a flashy player. Is he the best main support? Yeah, absolutely. But he's not a flashy player. Like, you would want someone like Lee Jae Gong, um, FD God. You know, like, they were, those are flashy players that make plays. They're playmakers. I guess that's what a star is. Um, you know, yeah. And then you can also think about, like, high resource and low resource players. Um, like, for example... Um, like Doomfist. Like when Ira plays Doomfist, he's not a high resource player necessarily. He's kind of a medium to high, right? Um, and this is not any offense. This is just how it is sometimes, right? Where if you put a lot of... He's going to require a lot of resources. But if you give him the resources, he is going to kill stuff. It's Doomfist. Duh. Right? Now, the opposite of that would be a low resource player, right? Now, and my favorite example of that is Striker. He doesn't need any help to pop off. He doesn't. I mean, he, fuck, look, he could probably play in, like, a 4500 game in Overwatch and ranked and not get any help and still carry the team. Because he's both that good, 
but also he doesn't require to have a constant pocket on him. He doesn't require those things. And it is nice. You shouldn't be doing those things for him. But it, you can just kind of like say, hey, striker, fuck off. Do your thing. Got it. And he does that. And he's good at doing that, right? Then you have other like high resource DPS players. I'm trying to think. Um, oh, Flutter is also a no, another low resource player. He doesn't require any attention. He's just good. Um, I'm trying to think of high resource DPS players. Like on Shock. Um, I don't know. Like, I'm trying to think of them. They're a lot more common in, like, contenders, but I don't watch enough of OWL DPS players to be able to tell you, like, like high-resource ones. I think maybe Happy would be a high-resource player. Um, Dante's, like, medium-resource. I'm trying to think of other players. Um, Sparkle, he's medium. Uh, Doha's, like, low, I think. Um, it's more common for tank players to be associated with high-resource and low-resource, right? Obviously, like, when you play Reinhardt, like... <laughs> You can the the Reinhardt can require every fucking healer in the game to keep him up, but if you do, he pops off, right? Um, or you can just have like someone who just plays the game very smart, not require any help, and still do everything perfectly, right? Um, now, it I think it is important for everyone in here to think about these the, like the role in a team that you want to um, fill, so to speak, um, and have a play style that matches that, right? Um, or, or on specific heroes, for example. Like, if we're playing Widow, like, Busy, when you play Widow, like, you don't require a lot of help. It is nice. Sometimes you need help. But you're just, like, doing your own thing. Yeah, who cares? You, you, you either just pop off, right? That's just what you do. Um, and being a low-resource player is good. But sometimes you, you need to be high-resource players, like main tanks or whatever, or off-tank players, um, in order for the supports to do something. So, um, I encourage everyone in here, and the VOD frogs who are watching this, um, to think about what kind of niche that they want to carve themselves into and the heroes that they play. Um, and like I said, there's nothing wrong with being a high resource player. We just can't have six high resource players on the team. <laughs> like that's, you just can't do that. Right. Usually it's like two or three people that are maybe like medium to high resource. Um, everyone else is just low resource doing their own thing. Um, it's usually high, low resource would be, uh, your DPS and your tanks, not really a support player. Um, but I mean, Violet is kind of, a high resource player sometimes depending on the team that he's playing against like that's why moth was so good because moth is a super low resource player but he's really good at enabling other people he's good at moving people around doing their job that's why he would that's just why he was the best main support ever um so yeah what time is it i think we have time to do a quick um overwatch thing i don't i'm not gonna make us go out of game i'm just gonna open a new whiteboard um and, like, maybe draw King's Row for you real bad. I guess I could just... Hold on. I'll just, I'll just go to this. Um, King's Row top down. Poggers. This is exactly what I want. Cool. Right. Make this bigger. How about I make this bigger? Whatever. I don't care. All right. So if we if we look at King's Row, top down, right? Obviously this is first. Oh shit! Give me the pen. Can I not draw on this? Okay, good. I can. Um, where can I? Where is the pen size I can change? There we go. All right. So if we look at King's Row, I'm gonna choose rainbow color because you guys can actually see that. Nah, not do that. Cool. All right. So I'm gonna I'm gonna just draw on this real quick. Um choke points i guess now this is primarily for the tank players but it's also important dps players to know this um and supports of course all right let me just quickly draw this oh, i can't fucking choose this color i'll use blue all right there there duh there duh duh um mm -hmm. no that's not one uh I think that's about it. Um, yeah, so on defense. All right, let's say it's second point, right? So the defend or the attackers responding there and defenders responding over there. And the cart is, I draw this in green, the cart is like right here. So what we would want to do, and I'll draw this in red, is the defenders in a perfect team fight scenario, right? So. We're, they're coming from this way, and the, right, we're already on point. 
would be we would want to take a fight right here, right? Oh, fine. I mean, fuck, you can take a fight right here. Not all six of you, just enough people. Um, and this is very important to think about. This is very, very specifically double shield, but it's also brawl. Um, I don't know how many of you... I'm sure a lot of you played in double shield meta, and it was very fucking boring. But this is literally how you play double shield in a nutshell. Is you would take a fight right here. You would back up without using any cooldowns, right? To here. All right. You're going to back up to this corner. You don't use a single cooldown. All right. And the cart is going to be right here. I don't know if you can see my mouse, but it's right there. Right. And then at this point, they have pushed up twice past the two chokes. And hopefully, you have pressured them enough to use their cooldowns. And hopefully, we haven't used a single one. We shouldn't need speed boost. If they, if you see them fucking rushing at us, okay, maybe we speed boost out. On this, we have an ult or something that you want you want to use, right? Now, this is called kiting. Um, it is. That's a fucking. That's not what I want. Um, this is technically a MMO term, um, but I don't care. It's what it is. Um, it's just that you're you're just making an enemy. A team go from one place to another while you use as little cooldowns as possible and hopefully that they use all of their cooldowns so that when the fight actually begins they don't have any cooldowns and you have all of yours so that you can re you can just fucking hard engage right at that like if you're playing brawl if you play this smart you would you could be burning their the enemy team's Ryan shield and you you'd be bunny hopping back letting your bap get some healing or whatever you know get your loose shield to get them beat right you can burn the entire Ryan shield from here to there and then re-engage with like a half shield on your own. Maybe get a free shatter, whatever. Make them regroup somewhere. Pun oh, I should just fucking stop drawing and right here. It's going to get real fucking messy. Hold on. Um, all right, so let's, yeah. So they would have to wait right here to get their cooldowns back up. We should have speed boost. And you can re-engage with speed boost. They're, they have like low shield. Just, it, and then this is where an IGL is specifically very helpful, okay? Because an IGL can make this the play. Let's go from gate to pub. It, 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 let's just kite them back. Let's re-engage with speed boost and let's break their shield. Boom. Look at that. IGL call. I don't even IGL. And I just made the perfect IGL call, okay? It, it kind of is that easy, but it's really not. Um... You can also think about ults and what ults they have or whatever, yada, yada. Um, and of course, there are certain characters in the game... Symmetra, who can kind of just cheat the system in this scenario, where she can just teleport behind you and, well, fuck, you know, and you, that's just how it is sometimes. Um, but like on third point specifically, it is so fucking easy to do exactly what I just said, okay? Because you can take a fight right here, back up, take a fight right there, back up, take a fight right there, depending on where the card is, you can take another fight, back up, right there, and now you have gone through four corners, and if the card is somewhere near the end goal, boom. You know how many fucking cooldowns you just burnt making them fight four different fucking corners? Right? Like I said, a double shield, it's very simple. Duh. You put a shield down. This is my corner now, right? Now, in double shield, this is where I, this is why I've learned this from another coach um, when I was on a team. The reason why this is important in double shield specifically, but you can also transfer it to brawl and other comps. Well, brawl. Um, is you're playing poke. Right? You're poking them. You're making them use their cooldowns to engage on you. While you're backing up, you're burning their shield, you're burning their resources, you're getting your ult charge up. You take another fight at a corner, should have your shields back up, right? And you just keep doing that because you're poking them until you, when you actually want to engage on them. Well, not really engage because you're playing poke. Um, but when you actually want to have the fight begin, right? This is all pre-fight because the fight actually hasn't begun yet. Then, you, then you're at an advantage already. Like you start the fight with an advantage. Now, a good team... Is not going to just hold W into you. And you can punish teams for being stupid and just being super aggressive. Because they don't know what you're doing. Right? Like, you can fucking hard abuse, like, tank players. Because they don't actually know what you're doing. They just think that you're being scared and you're just giving them free space. But what you're actually doing is burning their shield. Burning the other cooldowns. You're getting Maywall out. You're getting whatever fucking comp that they're playing. You're getting them to use their cooldowns effect... Well, not effective for them. But it's effective for you. So that when you actually want to engage in the fight. Like you can immediately. Alright that's speed boost in let's go. You, you can just have a hard. You know a sharp fucking do a 180. 0 to 60 real quick. Right. Like you can do that. Um, and I. 
would expect a dog to agree with me in that regard about this specific thing that I'm talking about, like hiding, uh, disengagements. Like this is, I guess, technically disengaging, um, and then you're gonna re-engage with your own cooldowns, right? Does anyone have any questions about this? This is not what I want to talk about today, but hey, fuck it, I brought it up. Like this is primarily like a tank thing, as you can probably see why. Um, but also supports and DPS. This will help you know where to position, right? Like, I know for a fact that sometimes we don't know where to position. Because we don't know where the fight's going to take place. But once you draw this out, right? Obviously, this would be a lot easier in game to show you. Um, but it's fine doing this with the top down. Is that now you know where to position. Because you you now know to... Ex you can expect where team fights are going to actually take place. Like, if we're somewhere on second, right? You can... You can, like, stage somewhere, like if you're playing Widow or Honda or something. Like, up here, as a fight is happening right here, right? You can also do a flank this way if the fight's happening right there or right here, right? Like, you can do certain things because you know where the fight is going to end up taking place. And you can get there before the team is expecting you to do that, like, in the, during the mid-fight, right? You can use your time wisely to get somewhere in the pre-fight so that when the fight actually begins, you're on an advantage, right? Again, I... That's primarily on attack, but on defense, it's very important to know where to position, um, both as a support and as a DPS, knowing where the fight's going to take place. Okay, are we disengaging? Where are we going? Um, all right, yeah, if we're, if we're going to be super aggressive, then I'm not going to be back here. I'm going to be right next to you, right, as a support or something. Um, oh, we're, we're going to disengage, take a fight on second? All right, cool. I'm just going to be playing up here, and then I'm going to back up, right, as a DPS player, like or Hanzo or something, right? Like, you can do those kind of things with information. Right, um, and it's important that we have an idea about how we want to play. Um, and again, that this depends a lot on tank synergy and how aggressive Foster wants to be or not be. Uh, it's really up to him. Um, but these are like the two different play styles. You know, you, you kite him back and just be aggressive, or you just say fuck it, I don't give a shit. We're gonna hold you in spawn. Like you can also just do that. Um, but spawn camping isn't necessarily like a forte of mine. I'm sure Adog and I could have a talk about how to spawn camp if that's what we want to do. Um, but yeah, so it's been an hour. Well, it wasn't an hour technically. Um, does anyone have any questions before I shut the fuck up and dismiss you? Also, everyone's muted if you didn't know. So. I mean, I'm good. No? Okay. Busy, Frothy, Ira? Uh, I'm good. I'm good. All right, I'm sure I was muted for a reason, so I'm sure he's fine. Um, I, I'm, yeah, I, I, I've got a question. All right, um, hopefully this made sense to all of you. Um, I hope. I hopefully the stream looked fine um, on Discord. I'm sure it looks fine on my, on uh, whatever. Um, oh, someone fucking! I need to ban this person. Hold on, that might ban. There's a fucking bot. Let's try to fucking get some view bot shit. Now, fuck you. Um, but anyway, yeah. So, that's all I have to say. You have no questions. I'm going to end the stream now. Um, hopefully, this was helpful. So, yeah. Goodbye, stream.